For thousands of years, the pine processionary caterpillar, an indigenous European insect, has been marching slowly but surely towards the north. At the onset of spring, the insect colonies form a procession and leave their nests never to return. The pine is their natural habitat. They feed off its needles and are a threat to the entire plot of land. The processionary caterpillar is the great destroyer of Europe's forests. In the Lande region of France, processionary damages are so spectacular that you can actually follow the animal's trace. These trees have not been burned. They have been entirely devoured by packs of starving caterpillars. In less than 100 years, the processionary has crossed the whole of France as far as Brittany and the Paris region. The authorities now understand the threat they are facing. Several research teams are studying the behavior of this disturbing insect in the hopes of curbing its expansion. In southern Spain, geneticist Carol Cerdelhue and ecologist Jose Hodard believe that the expansion of this destructive caterpillar began in the area. We're trying to determine where the pine processionary was able to survive the various frosts that have taken place during the Catronary. Most European species, in this case, survive in the zones that remain temperate. The problem is that there are no processionary fossils, unlike many other organisms that leave a trace, such as shellfish, trees, or vertebrae. So we have to use an indirect genetic approach to try to understand what happened. Genetic analysis reveals that during the last ice age 20,000 years ago, the pine processionary caterpillar was able to survive in four refuge zones. It is from these zones spared by the ice that the processionary set out to conquer Europe. The temperate oceanic climate and the warm winters of these regions were propitious for the caterpillars. These ones have just hatched, but they already have one obsession, eating. The pine processionary can only live in colonies of 100 to 150 individuals. Instinctively, it forms a procession in order to feed. For many years, scientists have wondered how such a tiny insect was able to cross over the Sierra Nevada range at an altitude of over six and a half thousand feet. It was initially believed that the main European mountain ranges would block the pine processionaries' migration from the southern refuges to the colonized zones in the north. So, Carol, we are now about uh, 1,000 meters in altitude, and as you can see, you can appreciate that vegetation is changing. And do you know until which elevation we will find pines and yeah, pine uh, processionary moss? Pines are around uh, 2,200 meters in altitude, but we have different species of uh, pine along the, the gradient. We have in the lower part uh, Pinus uh, alapensis, the Aleppo pine. Uh -huh. Then here we have uh, Pinaster, uh, maritime pine. And then in the top of the mountain we have uh, Pinus nigra and Pinus silvestris.
The fate of the processionary caterpillar is therefore closely linked to that of the pine tree. Its favorite variety is the black pine, but if none are to be found, the processionary is an opportunist and will make do with other pine varieties. Its impressive claws allow it to grab all kinds of needles, thick or thin, hard or soft, smooth or rough. Its ability to adapt its diet has been a decisive advantage. Switching from one pine to another has helped it to cross over the Sierra Nevada. Mountains are the ideal environment for the pine processionary. When there are climatic changes, the processionary adapts its altitude in order to find its favorite ecosystem. The mountains may be advantageous to this caterpillar, but higher altitudes equals lower temperatures. However, the processionary doesn't mind. This is one of the few insects that can easily survive the three months of winter. Its winter nest protects it from bad weather. This unique ball of silk has helped the processionary march upwards and along the mountain peaks reaching altitudes that would seem unreachable. This is one of the places, the highest places at which we can find this, this animal in, in, okay. in Sierra Nevada. And uh, you think it's a recent expansion? Yeah, some years ago it was not here for sure. So it's, it's a recent uh, expansion. The nest thickens and evolves as the individuals grow bigger. Each caterpillar unrolls a silk thread as it moves. The regular toing and froing during the three winter months produces a constantly growing nest. The nest is made up of two superimposed layers. The inner layer is thick and serves to isolate. The outer layer is more flexible and serves as the framework. There is no entry or exit opening. To re-enter their impenetrable fortress, the caterpillars must push their way through the weave. The colder the region, the more solid the framework. The thicker the inner layer, the more the caterpillars are protected from the cold of winter and from predators. The nest acts as a solar receptor, absorbing nearby infrared radiation. Jérôme Rousselet is a biologist at the National Institute of Agronomic Research in France. He studies the thermal characteristics of the nests in order to identify at what temperatures the caterpillars will die. This nest is generally well exposed to the south so as to take maximum advantage of the sunlight. With this heat camera, you can see that the nest temperature is close to my body temperature. This is considerably higher than the outside temperature, which today happens to be in the vicinity of 54 degrees. The caterpillars can withstand the cold from the third larval stage onwards. But thanks to this nest, during the course of the winter, they'll be able to resist temperatures as low as 3 degrees. Below this limit, they die. They'll also die if a lasting cold spell stops them from leaving the nest at night to feed. When they arrived in the northern Iberian Peninsula, the pine processionary stumbled upon the Pyrenees Mountains, whose highest peaks rise to an altitude of 11,100 feet. This would seem to be an insurmountable obstacle, yet they crossed over. Thanks to the Atlantic coastline's warm winters, a trail of caterpillars bypassed the mountains by following the coast. 
On the other side of the range, they discovered a highway to the north. Man had inadvertently rolled out the red carpet, the greatest artificial pine forest in Europe, and it's a three-star restaurant for the processionary caterpillar. They invaded this new territory, which became the base for their conquest of France. Hervé Jactel, a researcher at the INRA, studies the impact of processionary caterpillars on forests. On these leaves, you can see how the processionary pine eats away at the foliage. When the eggs hatch, the young in the larval stages prefer to eat old leaves, two or three year old needles. The next larval stages are not as picky or perhaps more voracious. They feed on the needles of the current year that contains more resin. When all the foliage is consumed in this fashion, the levels of defoliation can reach as high as 100%. This is what we can see in the trees in this colony, which is undoubtedly one of the most infested ones in all of the land and perhaps in all of France. The caterpillars wait for nightfall to leave the nest. They are vulnerable during daylight, but at night they are protected from many predators. They're not affected by the darkness because they're practically blind anyway. Their eyes are in fact four microscopic oculi, an atrophied arc-shaped organ. Their sense of smell, however, is highly developed. This is what guides them to the tastiest needles. Many animal species fast during the winter. The processionary caterpillars, on the other hand, gorge themselves with food every night. Four or five nests are all it takes to strip an adult pine tree from top to bottom in the space of one month. They diminish the tree's photosynthetic capacity so it can no longer allocate as much energy towards growth. A drop in tree growth usually goes along with the defoliation caused by the processionary. And in rare cases it can cause tree death. Defoliation may lead to death in two situations. The first is when the weakened tree is attacked by secondary insects, such as the bark beetle. The second is when the tree is defoliated over two or three consecutive years. The tree is so weak that it dies in the end. 